Alright, hey guys, uh, it's just, you guys are going to be learning about uh, control in your upcoming lectures. So I just wanted to give you a, a demonstration on position control with a cart. So we have this cart set up over here. And essentially we're going to create a control system so that this micro controller here can control the motor to affect where we are with the cart. So just on the diagram here I've got some of the components that we're using. So we have our microcontroller, the Arduino Mega. That's taking input from my potentiometer. So that's this guy here. So it's just a little knob that I can turn. And that's going to set the desired input. So that's being fed into an analog pin on the Arduino. I've got two digital pins that are controlling the motor driver. Essentially, if I'm going to want clockwise or counterclockwise rotation for the 12 volt motor. You need the motor driver because you can't power a motor directly from the Arduino. There's just too much voltage, too much current. So we have an external supply here that's giving us our 12 volts required to want run the 12 volt motor. And that's this guy over here. Something to keep in mind if you ever do this yourself, make sure you're getting a motor driver that can handle the amount of current you're going to pull. The guy that we got over here. It's from uh, Amazon, it can only handle up to 2 amps. We get around, the max I've gotten testing this is about 1.2 amps. So just keep that in mind. Uh, so from the motor, we're reading in the revolutions with a uh, rotary encoder, and we're sending that data back to the Arduino Mega. So that's pretty much it for the schematic. So in the code, I'm going to show you guys what you guys learn to control systems. We have uh, PID control, so I'm going to walk you through proportional, and then uh, PI, and then PID. So you can see here, we've got proportional gain, uh, integral gain, and uh, derivative gain are set to zero. We have a bit of proportional gain. So I'm just going to plug in my laptop here. Make sure I'm actually connected. And the right port. Okay. Upload. Okay, it's compiling. Okay, it's done uploading. We set it home. It. Okay, so you see this red mark here? That's our desired position. I can set that with the, uh, I'm just turning the uh, potentiometer to change my input. Potentially that's our goal. So you, you see, because we have proportional control, we're only getting these oscillations, right? Let's turn that off there. So if you remember from control systems, This is our uh, you know, time on the axis here and position of the cart. The dotted line is our, des our desired, and the red is our actual. So you can see with proportional control, you're going to overshoot over your desired, get some of these oscillations, and you're going to get some steady state error. And you can kind of see that when we come back over here. It's very small, but there is a little bit of steady state error, maybe you know, half a centimeter. So one way that you can get rid of steady state error is that you add in some integral gain. So just switching here, it's the same, rest of the same code, just some different gain values. So I decreased the proportional, just get rid of some of the oscillation. And then Ki is going to hopefully eliminate that error over time. Same thing, plug in my laptop. Upload the code. Reset. So you see it still overshoots, but now it's creeping towards our hopefully zero steady state error value. It's a little slow, but you can see it's going to get there. Yeah, so so if I give it a disturbance, same thing, it's trying to get back to steady state error. 
no treat. And eventually it's going to get there. So obviously you can, you can tune your values for better performance. This is a little slow, but you get the idea. And there's a bit of slack too. Then again, from your control systems, same idea. We have a bit of overshoot from our proportional, but now we have no steady state error. So a way that we can get rid of some of the oscillations, or the overshoot, I should say, is by introducing derivative gain. Again, same code, just different uh, gain value. Upload that. So it's got the same integral, so it's going to try and get rid of that zero steady state error. But what we can really tell is with the disturbance. You see, it didn't go past the line. There's no overshoot. And that's pretty much it. So again, looking at our, our graph here. We're able to reduce some of the overshoot by introducing uh, some derivative gain. And that's pretty much uh, just a basic application of uh, control on a cart. Thanks.